Hey everyone, it's your librarian Teresa. I want to introduce to you the first craft project that Mercer Library is handing out in the fall of 2020. We're going to be making these very cute little cross stitch samplers. So um, stop by the library and pick one up and here's how you're going to make one. Okay, I've opened up my kit and here's what you'll find inside. You have an embroidery hoop, you have a pattern. This is the planet pattern that we have. We also have a cupcake available. This is the cross stitch fabric and notice that there is a needle stuck in the corner of that so don't lose that. You don't want to step on it. It's not a very sharp needle. I can poke my finger with it and not hurt myself but if you poke hard enough it will hurt so be careful and be safe with that tool. This is embroidery floss that you're going to use for your pattern and the only thing you are going to need to add to all of this is a pair of scissors for cutting your thread. So, the first thing I'm going to do is take my embroidery hoop and I'm going to loosen it up by unscrewing the screw at the top until I can separate the two parts. What we're going to do is put your fabric in this hoop and that will hold it nice and, and tight for you so you can do your stitching on it. So I'm going to separate those parts and I'm going to set the bottom of the hoop down on the table and I'm going to take my fabric and put it on top of that. I'm going to take my needle out and set it to the side for now. And then I'm going to take the other part of the hoop and push it back over. I might have to loosen this a little more. Hang on. So I'll get it nice and loose by turning that little screw. And then I will push this over the hoop so that I can get my fabric in there nice and tight. And then once I have it lined up the way I like, mostly in the center, then I need to tighten that screw back down. And this is a little tough to, to turn, so you might need an adult to help you. Once you get that as tight as you can get it, then you're ready to start your stitching. So the next thing we're going to do is look at your pattern. Now, when you're looking at this pattern, each one of the squares on this pattern is going to show you where to put a stitch on your cross stitch design. And usually you want to start somewhere near the middle so that you don't start like, say you started here and you kept going, you might end up running out of space on your project. So you want to kind of start in the middle. And on this pattern, you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's a little bitty arrow here that's sort of marking this middle line. And then there's another line that goes through here that's a little bit darker. So this is right under here underneath the little planet smile. It's about the center of my pattern. And so I want to look at my cross stitch, my embroidery hoop, and see, okay, here's about the center of my design. What I'm going to do is start with this yellow band because it's something that's near the middle and it's really obvious, so it's going to be easy for me to figure out. So I'm going to plan to start with the, the bright yellow thread, and I'm going to plan to start right here near the middle. And I'll work this stuff first, and then I'll go back and work the other side. You can choose to do it in whatever order you want doesn't really matter. But you just want to not run out of space at the end. So I'll set this aside for a minute and I'm going to get my thread. Now the thing to know about embroidery thread is that you're not going to use it just like it comes. So if you take this off the cardboard holder and you look at this thread, it's pretty thick. You don't want to use all of that because it would make really bulky fat stitches and it just wouldn't look nice. But if you look carefully this thread is made up of a bunch of little threads. There are six of them in here. So if you pull it apart gently with your fingers, you'll see there are six little threads. And we want to use two at a time. So I'm going to carefully pull this apart so that I have two in one hand and four in the other. And I'm going to gently separate these. And just take some going slow and getting used to it because you don't want to tangle it up if you can help it. And I'm going to pull this apart until I have just two threads ready to be worked with. And I'm going to set the others aside for later. And then I'm ready to put those in my needle. So, you're going to have to thread your needle, which of course is tricky, but practice and you'll get it. Okay, and here is my two, thread, two threads from that embroidery floss threaded through my needle with a little tail hanging loose here. 
okay? Some people put a knot at the end, and you can do that if you want. I usually don't on cross stitch. So now I'm going to go back to my pattern, and I'm going to look right here, and I'm going to start here. So it's about two squares below the center of my picture. Here's the center. If you can see my needle, I should use a pencil. Maybe that's easier to see. Here's the center of my pattern. So I'm going to go one, two squares below that, and then I'm going to start this yellow. Now this is called cr counted cross stitch because you're going to have to do some counting so that you know you get the right number of stitches. So if this first row is here, I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stitches of yellow. Okay? So I'm going to go back to my pattern, I mean my fabric. This is about the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to go two squares below middle. And I'm going to start at the back, and I'm going to push my needle through there, okay? So that's about two squares below the middle, or close enough. I'm going to pull this through, but I'm not going to pull it all the way through. I'm going to leave some thread on the back. So here's the back. You see I'm pulling it very slowly through. You won't have to go this slow the whole time. And I'm going to leave a little tail of thread on the back. Now if you wanted to, wanted to, you could tie a knot in that so it doesn't come all the way through. I like the way it looks better without knots. So now we are ready to actually do some stitching. So there are lots of different ways to do cross stitch. If you talk to somebody else in your life that's done cross stitching before, they may show you a different way and that's totally okay. I'm just going to show you the way that I've learned how to do it and how I've done it in the past. So I've got my thread coming through to the front. And I, on the back, I've just got a little piece of thread left there. And I'm going to put my needle back in. Here's where I came out. I'm going to go up and across over one stitch, and I'm going to pull my needle through. Just gently now. You don't want to pull that thread through on the back. And if you can see this, I've made one cross over. Now for my first few stitches, I like to flip the thing over, because what I want to do is catch this tail. By that, I mean I want to put it underneath where I'm stitching to hold it in place. So I'm going to go straight down from where I was, and when I do that, I'm going to catch that little tail and hold it there. If you have a knot, this isn't quite as important, so maybe a knot would be easier if you've never done this before. So now I've made half of one stitch. I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to go up and over one. I'm going to turn it over to see what I'm doing on the back, and go straight down. Now I've done one half of two stitches. So I'm going to keep doing this until I have 13 half stitches. You can see why this kind of fabric is what we use for cross stitch, because it has these neat little holes in it. You can use regular fabric for cross stitch, but it's a lot harder that way. So now I've done one, two, three, four, five. I'll keep going until I get to 13. And on the back, can you see this? I'm to the end of that little thread tail, so now I don't have to keep turning it over and looking at it all the time. Now that it's snug in there, it's not going to come out. So I can just do this. And eventually you'll get faster where you don't have to look so much. That's 10. And that's 13 half stitches. So I'm going to come back up like I'm going to start another one. But I'm going to take a pause there. Let's look at our pattern. If you remember, I started here and I did these 5, 10, 11, 12, 13 stitches. So that's the end of this row for this color. 
So now what I need to do, if you look at this, it doesn't look like cross stitch yet. It just looks like a bunch of slashes, and that's not what we want. So now I need to go back and finish those crosses. So what I'm going to do is go back across each one of those stitches in the other direction. And if you can see, these are starting to look like little X's now. They had one stitch that was going this way, and now I'm putting the other half of the stitch going this way. So each one is a little X. And that's why we call it cross stitch, because it looks like little crosses or little X's. And that is the end of that first little row. So I have 13 little X's all in a line there. Now what I like to do, especially when I'm new at this, is I will go to my pattern and I will actually mark the stuff that I've already done. So I'm just going to scribble out that row and that reminds me that I've already done that one. Now, So now I'm going to look right below the row I just did and see that there are 10 stitches in a row. So I'll pick my work back up and I will bring my needle down to the row right below that. And see, I'm going to start in the bottom left corner. I'm going to go to the upper right corner for each stitch. Come straight down. Go to the top right. Down to the bottom left, and so on. All the way across for 10 stitches, because that's what my pattern showed me to do. Now that I've done 10 of those first hash marks, I'm going to go back the other way so that I can cross those into full cross stitches. And there are my 10 stitches. If you flip this over and look at the back, because of the way we're doing this with half a stitch at a time, we're just getting these really nice neat little lines on the back and that looks really good. You always want your like, work to look nice on both sides if you can make it that way. So that's my second row, so I'll go ahead and mark my pattern. And now I'll look at my third row and see I only need two more down there. So let's just do those real quick.
there. Now I have all these, this part of my planet's rings done here. The next part I would do, probably, you can do anything you want, really. You could start here and go that way. But I'm going to jump over to here and finish this part of the ring. Now, one thing about cross stitch is you don't want to have a bunch of strings hanging loose on the back if you can help it. If you're going a long distance with a, with a color, if you, need to, if you need to change it, um, you should actually end your thread and start over like I showed you at the beginning by catching in that tail. What I'm going to do instead in this case is I don't want to just carry my thread all the way over there because that's going to leave this big loose thing hanging out there. What I'm going to do is carefully work my way underneath some of these stitches. Now I'm on the back and I'm going to just carefully pick up some of this thread as I go so that my other thread is not just hanging loose. And it'll just stay a little bit neater that way. So you see what I did? I just trapped it right underneath there. Now when I come out here on the front, I have to look at my pattern again. Here's that first row I did. One, two, three, four in from that row is where I want to start this row. So I will count that carefully. And then I will do this little row of five. There's another row done. I'll mark it off on my pattern and go on to the next row. So look carefully to see where it goes and follow your pattern. Now here's a trick. I just did this row of two and I need to put another row of two right on top of it. But if I come back into this hole where I normally would start, I just went in that hole and it's just going to bring my thread out. It's going to undo my stitch. So when that happens, it's okay to start from the top right and go back. I'm still making a slash that looks in the same direction. I just started it in a different place. So sometimes you have to think a little bit about where you can put your needle in next so it doesn't just pull back out the thread you just did. And there, I finished this part of my planet's rings. So now, I want to show you how to finish off your thread, because we're going to have to change this out. It's getting pretty short, and also we need to go back to the other side of the picture, so we don't want to string our thread going all the way across. So to finish this out, what you do is just like I did when I was moving from one place to another. I just go and I pick up some stitches on the back, you don't want to go all the way through to the front. You just want to get some of this thread on the back. Put your needle under that and bring your thread through it. And then it works best to go back the other way a little bit too so that it's going out and back again and that'll hold it nicely on the back of your work. I'm 
And when you're done with that, you just take your scissors, cut off your thread, and you're ready to go on to the next section. Okay guys, so this is, um, I've been working on this for a while and I just thought I'd show you my progress and I want to let you know that this does take a while. You're not going to be done with this project in one day. So take a look at what I've done here. I hope that my instructions have been good enough for you to follow. If you have any problems, you can stop by the library and ask for help or you can uh, send us an email or give us a call. And if you get your project done, we would really love to see some pictures. So uh, send in some pictures, put them on our Facebook page if you can and um, share what you did. So thanks for watching.